Okay, this first example is verifying. You have to read directions, know the difference. We just spoke about how there is going to be a lot of back and forth between either simplifying, your directions will tell you to simplify, okay? Verifying, it might just be one word, verify, simplify, those are your directions, or solve. They all could look very, very similar, almost identical. However, each set of directions means you have to do something different. So this right here is going to be an example where we verify. If you're verifying a trig identity of some sort, you can use the fundamental identities, which include the reciprocal identities, includes the quotient identities, and it includes the Pythagorean identities. There's several more. Those are just three of the, I'll even make it recip because otherwise it looks like record. So those we can use, all right? And we'll use those fundamental identities. Those are common known trig facts. And we want to verify that this is true. Allegedly, the left side of the equal sign is equivalent to the right side of the equal sign. If both sides of the equal sign are equivalent, we should be able to show that. That's what verify means. I'm not moving anything from one side to the other, okay? You hear me? We are not moving anything from one side to the other. So I should actually change this um, title over here. I shouldn't say solving trig equations, right? So this is verifying trig identities, sorry. I -E -S. Okay, there we go, problem solved. Now, you won't bring anything to the other side. You will not divide both sides by something. You will not multiply both sides by something, add or subtract to both sides. You are going to pick a side to keep the same. The side that you wanna keep the same normally, and I'm gonna make an exception this time, normally I would keep this side the same, the simpler side, and I would try to take something that's complex and make it more simple since we learned how to do that when we simplified. However, like I said, I'm actually gonna keep this side the same and I'm going to turn this tangent to the fourth theta into this right over here. So in my first step, again, I grab that. In my first step, I'm going to rewrite the left side. Secant to the fourth theta minus two secant to the second theta plus one equals. This should look like a quadratic. When you were in Algebra 2, you factored quadratic polynomials, quadratic trinomials, binomials, whatever. Um, it's a quadratic style, but it's fourth power, so I guess technically quartic. And what happens is this power or degree or exponent will be double whatever this power is. And we could have solved this using factoring. But again, we're not solving but it should, in your mind, jog your memory and make you think about factoring because we could do this another way. Now, tan to the fourth theta is not something that's on my trig identities. However, tangent to the second power theta is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change tangent to the fourth theta into tangent squared theta times tangent squared theta. When you multiply the same type of trig, you add your exponents. 2 plus 2 would be 4. Done. I also could have written this as tangent squared theta inside of parentheses and then put a second power outside of that. When you raise something to a power and then raise it to a power again, you multiply the exponents. 2 plus 2 is 4. 2 times 2 is 4. Kind of a weak example because people could do their own thing and get the right answer, but it is what it is. So from here, this is something that we have seen in some of our identities. I hope that you would know where to look right away. Unfortunately, tangent is sort of one that is all over the map. Tangents involve here, here, and here. Tangent squared, I'm just gonna show you a few options. Tangent squared theta, if I look at the reciprocal identities, equals one over cotangent squared theta. If I look at the quotient identities, the first one it would equal would be, and I'm just throwing a squared on it, it's the same as everything else, it's just squared. One squared is also one, so I just left it as one. Um, sine squared theta over, I don't know why I wrote it as an S, sorry, over cosine squared theta, 
or the bonus ratio I gave you, and be careful, a lot of us were doing that backwards recently, but it would be secant squared over cosecant squared. The clue I gave you was if it's for tangent, S is always on top, and if it were for cotangent, the C is always on top, all right? Reciprocal, quotient, Pythagorean. Pythagorean identity, there is one that has tangent squared. Really, there's one that has all six trig functions are always squared in something. Those are a little harder for some people to memorize. However, a lot of people tend to remember sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to one. If that is one that you can memorize, I showed you this when we first did trig identities. If that's something you can memorize, then take that example and to create the other two in your head, you're going to do a little bit of division. As long as you know your reciprocal identities, you'll be fine. First, I'm gonna divide everything by cosine squared theta. Again, doing that in my head, little note, very tiny, sorry, I wrote it so small. Sine squared theta over cosine squared theta. Think about it, use your brain, what's that? Tangent squared theta, keep going, plus. Well, what about cosine squared theta divided by cosine squared theta? One, anything over itself is one. And then what about one? One divided by cosine squared theta, one over cosine, so one over cosine squared is secant squared theta. And that's the one that we are going to use for this example right up here. The other one, just for notes if you want, if I went back and to the original, went back to the original and divided all three parts by sine squared theta. Sine squared divided by sine squared is one plus cosine squared divided by sine squared is cotangent squared. And one divided by sine or sine squared in this case equals cosecant squared. So as long as you know the first one and then what to do, you can do that in any emergency. I did, I promise this is how I introduced them, but when they're not relevant to you and you don't see the point, it doesn't always stick. I showed it to you again a couple weeks later. Maybe this feels like the first time you ever saw this. That's okay. You know it now. All right. Tan squared, tan squared. I want to replace tangent squared because I see tan squared plus one is secant squared. That's great. It relates these two together and I want them to be related to each other because I need to get this to look more like this. If I isolate tan squared theta in this identity, I can do that by subtracting one from both sides. That means that tangent squared theta, again, I'm just jotting down the note of it, tangent squared theta will equal secant squared theta minus one, not plus one. You don't just plop plus one to the other side. So minus one. Now, again, I'm leaving this the same. I'm only changing the right side for my example here. So I have secant to the fourth theta minus two secant squared theta plus one equals, I'm gonna swap each of those tangent squared thetas out for this, secant squared theta. Secant, oh, well, minus one, sorry. Secant squared theta minus one, secant squared theta minus one. Now, again, just look at what you have and look at where you're going. Remember what you're doing. You're verifying, you aren't solving, you aren't just simplifying. We're sort of simplifying one side. We're unsimplifying. We're making it more complicated. But you're not solving for theta. You're not going to get an answer like theta equals pi over 6. That's not going to happen. You're just going to get this equals itself. Check. And you're done. So if this is what I have on this side, and I even said when you first looked at it, you should have thought back to algebra 2, to factoring. Um, factoring, well, to unfactor, you would distribute or FOIL or expand or multiply, whatever word you use. So that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm going to expand or multiply these together with FOIL, right? First times first, outer, inner, and last. Secant squared times secant squared. You have to know your rules of your exponents for multiplication. Even again, this example, if you did the wrong thing, you'd probably get the right answer, but it would be secant to the fourth theta outer is minus, I'm going to leave room because I'm doing the next step in my head, 
minus secant squared theta, but inner is also minus secant squared theta. So if I have one negative secant squared theta and then I have another negative secant squared theta, well, now I have negative two secant squared theta, okay? For big boys and girls, we could add and subtract quickly for those two terms right there. And then negative one times negative one is positive one. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. We verified it, we showed all of our work. You always show your work, that's the point, when you verify a trig identity. So this is some type of identity. This and this are equal, all right? Totally equivalent. And you just needed to show by changing one side that they're equal. If you wanted to do the left side instead, an option would be, if you're good at factoring, by all means, knock yourself out, you could have factored this, you would have gotten this right here, then you could have used the Pythagorean identity that we used, but in the other direction, change this and this into this, and then multiply those into that. So it's up to you what you think is easier. So hopefully you understand that. If you watch this later and you do understand it for your notes, sure, thumbs up. If you don't, thumbs down. Then I know this video has a lot of thumbs down. You guys don't get it. So we need more practice. That's fine, okay? I don't care about a lot of, uh, what is it? Thumbs up. Okay. Hopefully that's good. Any questions in the chat before I end the video that you want me to address before I stop recording? Going once, going twice. Um, I wanted to ask, uh, on like the same worksheet. Yeah. But about uh, this uh, one before I stop recording though, hmm? but is it about this example for this video or can I end uh, the recording? No. Okay, so I'm going to end the recording.